Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be another in my RHCSA practice session series where I'm not necessarily trying to give authoritative information as much as show how I would prepare for a particular objective should I be preparing myself for the RHCSA exam again. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the last objective within the Manage Containers objective set, and that is Attach Persistent Storage to a Container. Before I get started, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video, and also want to invite everyone, if you enjoy the content of this video or find it useful, make sure you click like, and if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can be aware of when new content comes available. The objective attach persistent storage to a container is a pretty cryptic one in my opinion for the RHCSA objective list. And this might be because I don't have a whole lot of experience with containers and I'm not a master of them, but I wasn't really sure what persistent storage meant. So doing a little bit of research and seeing some other tutorials and seeing how folks handled this, I've come to the conclusion that this probably means you need to be able to present data or some type of storage from your host to your container. For example, let's say that I make a directory called HTTPD and I'm going to create a little test file here. We're going to output that to test1.txt and let's say that I wanted to run a container image and in this case I'll, I'll be using um, Apache for this and I wanted to present this directory and its contents to the Apache container. So what I will do for that, I've already downloaded my image for this, but I will do podman run. I'm going to give this a name. Do DIT. We will um, map 7000 to 8080. I'm going to use the dash V flag. And what you can do with dash V is give it a local volume or rather local directory that you want it to be on the container. So for this, we'll do tilde, that'll map for our home directory, httpd, and that's going to go to var www.html. And I'm also going to do colon z, and I'll, I'll get into that in just a moment. And then the name of our container image. I realize what I've done, I misspelled my directory. Let's fix that real quick. And there we go, we have our container. So we'll do podman ps, and we see that our container is up. So what I should be able to do is curl to localhost and slash text1.txt, and I should be able to see that, um, that file. So let's try that. So we'll do curl http localhost port 7000 test1.txt and there is our file and if I were to start a bash session into this um, this container so podman exec it httpd1 and we're going to run bin bash and I were to ls var www html we should see test1.txt and if I were to cat that we see that, that, that it has what we need. So from this perspective, this is done, and, and this will persist insofar as if I were to stop the um, container, and then start the container again. And then curl the same URL our file is there. Of course, to make this container itself persist, we would need to uh, make this a systemd service. And I have uh, another video, which I'll make a little link that should appear if you're in YouTube on the upper right hand corner, I think it'll be right hand. And that'll be a link to that video where I show how to make a container persist by making it a systemd service. But for for this objective, this is this is pretty much it. The thing that I did want to talk about was this colon z. And let's go into the man pages for podman run. I'm going to search for colon 
Z space. Let's see what comes up. It talks about volume mounts. And by having the colon Z, what that, from what I understand, what that's telling Podman to do is to relabel the SE Linux context on your directory to where your container is going to be able to use it, basically. Now, there's probably some more details to that, but for the purpose of what I think this exam is talking about, which is kind of high-level overview, that, that's what's going on. So, case in point, if I were to look at the SE Linux context for HTTPD, notice what we have here. We have um, object R container file or the context container underscore file underscore T. If I were to make another directory, HTTP, HTTPD2 and ls-lz, notice the context here is different. This is just good old standard context that, that you're getting when you make a directory. So as a result, if I were to make another container and I attach this particular volume or th this particular directory to it, I'm going to go ahead and echo a test file here. So test file two and HTTP two test two.txt. And while we're at it, I'm just curious here. wanted to see the um, the SE Linux context for the file within. And we'll do this for HTTPD2. And, so, and we see that it has the kind of standard SE Linux context. So if I were to do my podman run, we'll give this the name of HTTPD underscore two. We'll do 7001 to 8080, because if I just do 7000, I'm going to get an error saying, hey, this particular port is already being used. And we'll do HTTPD2. We'll map that to www.html. We're not going to put the Z this time. And we'll do the container name, or the container name, the image name. All right, Podman, of course, I need to give it a command, Podman PS, and we see that our container is running. And if I were to curl localhost 7001 this time, and we'll do test2.txt, we get a complaint that we are forbidden to use that. And the reason being is the SE Linux context with that. One other thing to note is if I were to go into the a bash shell with that particular container. So podman exec httpd2 dash it bin bash. Oops, need the it to go in front. Let's try that again. And let's try to list var www.html. We get permission denied. Okay, so let's try to go up to let's do ls-l var, and so looks like we sh we should have permission into www. So let's try that. All right, we have that. So let's do ls-l var www. All right. Ah, notice how we have root root for that, and I'm just curious to see what the SC Linux is for it. All right, so we have what we would expect, which is root root, unconfined object, because that matches the SC Linux context that we have locally. And by the way, the user that, that we are using is the default user. It's a part of the, um, the group for root, but it's still the default user. What's curious, though, is why I could not list that directory because you would think that you can because I should have read permissions for that but that might be an SE Linux thing going on there should be able to change into that directory oh let's try that again all right now I'm not able to to list what's in the directory that's curious so what I'll do let's do the same and take a look at the container that has SE Linux configured for it. 
admin exec it httpd one min bash let's take a look at the difference here so ls lz var www all right so notice how the se linux container is different for html and let's change directory into html I'm able to list that there, so I'm just curious what the SE Linux is for it. Hmm. So I guess um, part of what's going on here is while your group permissions are allowing you to be able to read what's in that directory, it might be an issue of the SE Linux context will not allow that default user to be able to even read the, the file, even if you're in a bash session. And then obviously the SE Linux is not allowing um, anyone to be able to access that from the outside world as far as it being um, accessed via Apache. So this isn't going to be a, a very long video because there, there's not a whole lot to it as far as from what I gather this objective wanting is simply the dash V to attach the local host directory to, to your container. And then colon Z is just one of the options for SC Linux. But uh, I would imagine that that will be one that you're probably going to want to do almost any time you do this, because I would think that, that you want Podman to handle any of the SE Linux context. There are a couple of other options that you probably saw there in the man pages, like read, write and such. And so I would encourage you as you're preparing for the exam to, to take a look at that. And, and I guess, either be familiar with them or be familiar enough to be able to find them in the man pages. So as always, if you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure you click like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't and ring the bell so you can be notified of when new content comes available. And I will see you the next time.